You ever seen Rocky? When like he cracks it into the glass and then just chugs it? Yeah. I did that once. And I was like, ha ah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't pass it through. It was just there. <laughs> you started fucking dripping out of your mouth and shit, bro. <laughs> My dad was laughing. And it, I forced myself to swallow it. And I was like, that was one out of the five eggs I'm supposed to drink. <laughs> I fried the rest. Fuck <laughs> said it's the same thing, bro. Yeah, dude, my, my dad will bring up that story every once in a while. I'm like, it looked cool in a movie. <laughs> like, <laughs> nah, but so I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge right now that we're on camera. So, guys, you want to say what's up? Hey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've been on camera. <laughs> that wasn't at all awkward. Uh, we have the camera thanks to our boy Raul the Barber. Cuts hair at the Barber's Den. I didn't plan on doing this, so I don't know the address off the top of my head. Fuck with him. Shout mm-hmm. out to the dude. Just click on the link. Add I could link. also do that. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? But anyways, welcome to the Dead Taco Podcast. I'm your host, Chris, and today I'm here with Jesus and Josh. And today we're here to talk about the 1981 horror film, The Fun House, directed by Toby Hooper. And I didn't fucking know, bro, this dude made the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original one, mm-hmm. and fucking Poltergeist. I saw the when you sent us a little picture of it. It's just on there. I didn't. I didn't pay attention. I didn't even like catch that. I've seen this movie like three times, and I never once picked that up. I feel like this directing hadn't was nothing similar to the other movies. No, I don't feel like it either. No, but it was distinct. <clears throat> like it was different. I feel similar to those movies. Like there's nothing else like those. I mean, there is now like ripoffs, but at the time when they came out, like they were definitely original ideas. I feel. So, you guys had never seen this before, correct? No. Nah, I never heard of this movie. No. Hmm. But you guys have heard of the uh, guy's other movies, right? Yeah. yeah. I've seen those. You've seen the original Texas Chainsaw and Poltergeist? No. I've seen most of it. Like, older movies like that don't really get my attention. It's not like your go-to? Mm-hmm. I, I need to see that gore shit. This is like the first older movie we've done, right? Because, like, I see the dates on all the shit I post, and I'm like, man, I think the oldest we had done was, like, 2003. So I've had this, like, itch to do something older. Yeah, it's like a 40-year-old movie. Yeah, this was 1981. 81. Dude, 81. I think my dad was just a kid. But no, so, like, you would classify this movie, I guess, as a slasher. That'd be the best way to describe it, correct? Could you say that? <sighs> What do you consider a slasher? A slasher would be like similar to Friday the 13th, Halloween, the guy with the mask chasing the kids. Doesn't necessarily mean he has to have a knife for it to be a slasher. It's just, that's just like, it's one villain, one central guy. No. Just pretty much hunting down the kids. I would. I would. But there's multiple though. Like, I too. Multiple. But the main dude was like. <laughs> that's a definition. <laughs> there was definitely like a central figure, you know? Yeah. yeah. That was more of like just a background thing. Like in your guys' opinion, how do you guys think this stacks up to like those more known movies, I feel? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Friday the 13th. Nah. You I'm, don't think it would hold a candle to those? Hell no. Nah. Not even close. And, hmm. and I don't know if there's a remake, but I would like to see it. If there's a remake, I'd like to see it. Good. I wouldn't have high expectations for it. Because there's a movie similar to this called uh, Dark Ride. It was one of the After Dark uh, Horror Fest movies. And it's essentially, you know, kids break into the fucking old school haunted house with, like, the push cart. Guy breaks out of the insane asylum. That's the whole plot of the movie. No, I've seen one that was called, like, the Fun House Massacre or some shit like that. I don't know. Either way, I've never heard of either one of these. Yeah, I know. I liked it. A lot of titties. Titties. Pretty nice titties. I can't remember when the hell I saw this. Like this is like I said, I've throughout my life I've just seen a bunch of movies as a kid. Like literally pre, you know, ten years old. And I was just kinda like they're always in the back of my head. So I like to run them back now like as an adult. Because, you know, my parents made me cover my eyes and shit for the titties and stuff. Nah, these movies would never happen in my house. Because they're Mexican, don't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the main point. <laughs> they're not going to understand the movie to begin with. 
Uh, It'd always make me turn around. There was a window behind the couch. <laughs> but I just like stare at the window trying to see the movie. You look for your corner, bro, where the reflection of the TV was? Yeah. I think my dad caught me one time. He just like smiled at me. I remember they tell me to cover my eyes with my hands and I do like fucking uh, fish fingers. <laughs> fish fingers? Like fucking big ass webs, bro. <laughs> Josh, you ever thought like you turn around and you look at, your, look at the window? And instead of like titties, it was a cock. And so, <laughs> <laughs> your dad smiles at you. <laughs> I feel like I'll be laughing too. <laughs> he's like, he's going to learn today. <laughs> oh, dude. But, yeah, my parents are the same thing. They made me turn around for movies, Spanish movies. I'm going to go ahead and give a synopsis of the movie. So, I bet yet when you guys do it. Okay, let's say Josh doesn't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, describe what the movie's about without giving away spoilers. So, like, read what would be, like, on the back of the movie in your mind. But just, you know, in your words. Okay. <laughs> Edit that shit out. <laughs> so, four people go into a fun house. They pay to get in, but they don't get out. I think that is what's actually on the cover of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> they pay to go in, but they don't come out. Yeah, that was literally what the description of Amazon had. <laughs> So I think this movie's set in the 80s, four kids, they decide to go to a fun house, like a haunted house attraction, and they get the itch to stay the night. And of course, once they go inside, they see some shit they shouldn't, and shit cracks off. It's more or less the premise of the movie, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I would never do some stupid shit like that. You say no, man, but... I'm not doing stupid shit. (laughs) Don't get me wrong. But... I mean, you played an instrument around, like, paintings in somebody's basement. Yeah, but it was okay. And and, and then at some point, like the just the guys in hoods like walk into the basement with you. <laughs> they were playing instruments with us. <laughs> <laughs> they knew they weren't connected. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and break the movie down now. If you haven't seen it, we're about to spoil the shit out of this movie. So I recommend you going to watch it and then coming back. So this movie started out with the uh, the intro, which was a really long like credit scene when they're showing like the uh, different animatronics that are in the funhouse. Mm-hmm corny as shit extremely all the different like puppets and the machines and stuff i'm gonna be honest i fast forward to that part right i think i just did it because i was playing with my phone or something for that whole time yeah me too i was kind of hoping one of you guys were paying attention <laughs> but yeah just random like cheesy you know skeleton crackhead looking guys clown with a knife and did you guys pay attention to the music at all Mm-hmm. It was like funhouse music that would like kind of. Or you said you fast forwarded through. Yeah. It was uh, funhouse music that would kind of uh, out of nowhere just kind of fade to this like synth, just, just dun dun, just real hard, which was actually kind of cool. I didn't mind the music. So the first actual scene of the movie is we get a POV, like we're seeing the cameras supposed to be somebody's eyes in a bedroom, right? Mm-hmm. This is a really sus at like a suspect ass fucking bedroom because isn't there like medieval torture equipment on the walls there's like yeah. masks and shit yeah that's... why would he have like a knife and what? shit he had like a it was a fucking mace yeah i'm not sure if that was his room it's like she goes back in there and all that shit's not on the wall well no they went back to the same room but the thing is is like that room did not look like it was his age with the room you know yeah we're spending a lot of time talking about this kid's room but i mean it's worthy of a conversation because he had some strange shit all over his room yeah like uh, man if it was like 2000 this motherfucker's gonna shoot up a school mm-hmm. yeah there's evidence everywhere that he's gonna shoot up a school it looked like he was into horror movies yeah he had some like horror-esque movie posters 
That's right. He has like a Frankenstein poster on his wall, right? Yeah. He did? Mm-hmm. Oh, he did. So he's looking around the room and he goes up to these weapons he has on the wall and he grabs a knife, correct? Mm-hmm. And then he takes the knife. Oh, and we see a clip of a girl going into the shower. And the girl looked young as fuck initially, correct? Yeah. In my opinion, she was baby faced as hell. Until she took the robe off. And I say no baby face. No, no, no. There wasn't a baby face. Those were full on like 30 year old woman titties, I feel. Yeah, they were, they were a little bit saggy. Yeah, she was definitely not a young woman. Then I could not tell until she took the robe off. Was I alone in that thinking? No. Mm. But after that, she didn't she didn't look baby faced anymore. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like as soon as I saw titties, I'm like, oh, all right. Like because when she walks in, she, her baby face, she looks like like all right, this is maybe 18, 16, something like that. And I'm pretty sure that's what they try to go for. Yeah. So I mean, she had the face, but that body was definitely been through some battles. She won a couple battles. I mean, there were titties. Don't get me wrong. Not 1980 titties. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting a bush. Did they even show that? Well, that's, that amount of bush, I would have seen it. <laughs> Should have gone over to her belly button. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, this, this chick took a shower. Um, it's pretty much what we're just trying to sum up right now. And she, uh, she as she's she wasn't ugly. She was pretty pretty good looking. Nah, yeah, she's a cute chick. But no, so while she's she hasn't even gotten into the shower yet, but we flash back to the person who's creeping in this room and there's even like a puppet head, like on a stick. Mm-hmm. Is that supposed to be like a ventrilo a ventriloquist thing, you think? Yeah. Because like the mouth looks like it moves, right? Yeah, he was like messing yeah, he around was with, the, with the controls. And then, so he also goes to his wall, and he grabs a knife, and then he puts on the clown mask. So now the camera's gone to this POV where we're seeing through actual, like, the clown mask. You can see the little two eye holes. So this stalker goes into the restroom while the girl is showering. And uh, they pull the curtain. <laughs> she pull, they pull the curtain, and uh, it's pretty much like an homage to uh, Psycho. Did you guys pick that up? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Because I think, like, they even do the stab motions while the chick yells. And she catches the hand. And as the knife actually touches her skin, it bends. She tears the mask off and she sees that it's her little brother. Now, Jesus pointed this out as I did. This was something I wanted to talk about. In what world, you know, does your little brother, does the little brother go to the the big sister while she's taking a shower and just completely stare at her titties and pretend to stab her with a knife as a prank. Not just her titties. She was full-blown naked. Yeah. Do that you have an older weird. sister or is yours younger? Mine's younger. You have the older sister. Mm-hmm. Was this ever like a prank you pulled? Fuck no. Oh, no. Hell no. No, nah, dude. It's, well, I, we were taught just to always lock the restroom no matter what. To avoid this shit. Right. And we knock. Hard. To make sure there's nobody in there, <laughs> but not nah, in, and um, that must be like I, I don't even know because I've never, never in my life ever imagined like shit. That's some there's a word for it. Like I said, the beginning with this kid, that was that kid's room. He's got to show up at school, he's probably has something for his sister, too. But nah, that is disturbing. Yeah, I don't see where like that prank was going. Yeah, me neither. Kind of, it kind of seemed like an excuse just to show some tits in the movie. Yeah, that that's the best way to put it, dude. If you're thinking about it, what what were you pointing at that kid's age? Like ten. Ten. Yeah. Obviously, the chick had to be twenties. Well, I think in the movie she's supposed to be like sixteen, high school age, because she's still asking her parents for permission. Right, but real life she was probably like twenties. Real life, bro, I'd say closer to thirty, dog. 26, 28. This 10 year old, they get, the parents get this 10 year old to look at a naked chick. I can imagine maybe they edited it to where like it looks like it, but maybe she's wearing like a bathing suit in the scenes where he's actually there and you only see like her stomach, remember? We don't know. 19, I mean, maybe he was. 1980. But I doubt it. So after the, uh, the sister pulls the brother's mask off, he dips out. He runs away. She chases him, right? Mm-hmm. She goes to his bedroom and like you can see the silhouette of a person under the sheets. And when she pulls the sheets back, it's the puppet that we saw earlier with a knife in its head, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did it have a knife before? 
No, I think he put it in there. Oh. Which we didn't see him do. So after she sees the puppet with the, the knife in its head, she goes to the closet. And as soon as she opens it, snaps a picture. Polaroid picture. Pulls the nigga out of the closet and pretty much just threatens him, right? Mm-hmm. She says, like, I'm going to get you back so bad. You won't know that I got you so bad. I feel like that's word for word what she said. Yeah, she said, uh, you won't know when it's coming, and you won't know how, but it'll come. And is she the one who looks at the actual Polaroid, or was it him? It was her. It was her. Did you guys get the uh, Easter egg in that? The back? In the background, the Frankenstein poster is right over her shoulder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Foreshadowing, you know, what we know comes later. So then we go to the parents downstairs, and they're watching The Bride of Frankenstein. So this movie fucking throws the Frankenstein foreshadowing in like a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. And you guys being that you'd never seen this, you actually noticed all that? Yeah, I noticed that. And did you pick it up as foreshadowing? Like later on? Once I saw saw it on the TV, I was like, yeah, it's going to be something with Frankenstein. But then it took a twist. And I was like, oh. Right. So the daughter's getting ready to go out, and while she's getting ready to go out, the dad mentions that, uh, he's like, hey, you shouldn't, have you heard about this fair? Two little girls died at the town it was at last time or whatever. They found their Mm -hmm. bodies. They couldn't recognize them and shit. So apparently she lied to her folks, right? She said she was going to a movie Yeah. with her date, whose name is Buzz. And the girl's name is Amy, the daughter. And pretty much her parents are just shit all over this dude before he even gets there, right? Well, <clears throat> they already know that the guy works at a gas station, so they have a pretty good idea who he is. I don't like the dude. Seemed kind of like a brick. He is. I don't know, dude. He reminded me of, like, Han Solo. Han? Han. Han. Fuck both of you, okay? <laughs> Han Solo. Dude. Please tell me this. Please Han- don't say that. Yeah, tell me who is this guy. I never heard of this guy. Han Solo? Yeah. Fucking is it when you jack off? And- yeah, bro. It's a fucking- <laughs> <laughs> you do a hand solo? <laughs> <laughs> all right, bro. You caught me. It's my fucking OnlyFans. All right, dog? Just subscribe to the Hand solo. Han. <laughs> Sorry. All right. He looks, like, he looks like a fucking off-brand Han Solo, in my opinion. Yeah. You guys see that? Yeah. A little bit. Like an old school Harrison Ford. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I right. can see it. But like you guys said, the guy does appear very douchey at the start because he doesn't come up to the front door. Yep. So the parents do have something. He just honks the fucking horn when he pulls up. Yeah. No. As soon as... Every time I've gone out, I've always gone and knocked on the door. Especially when the girl lives at home and you know her parents are there. I mean, nowadays it's different, though, because you could just text a female, like... Okay, I'm outside. I'm pulling up. I, um... I, I did it once and I regret it. And I just texted her, hey, I'm outside. And she was at her parents' house. I picked it up from her parent, parents' house. She opens the door and everything. And then when I started driving off, she's like, hey, um, my family thinks you're your dick. <laughs> and I was like, fuck. We didn't last that long. But, yeah, that's what made me stop doing that. As I feel like it's a respect thing. But you notice that when they pull away, he did a fat-ass burnout. That would have pissed me the fuck off. First off, I'm like, who the fuck are you? Leaving tire marks on my street like that. Mm. The mom also seemed kind of like a... Alcoholic? Yeah, alcoholic. The mom seemed very judgmental. Another thing I can't remember what the dude said that pissed me off in the car. He, uh... Because when she gets in the car, the first thing they talk about is she's like, Hey, you know, I don't really feel comfortable lying to my parents. You know, maybe we should just go see a movie. We don't have to go to the fair. And then he says something about, isn't he like, what do, you, what do your parents know? What's your dad know? Something specific about your dad. Yeah, he was he was talking shit about the dad. Because she's like, you don't even know my dad. Yeah, she stopped and she checked him, in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest. I was like, girl, I'll be like, uh, we're done here. Yeah, right? Like, but she was cocked thirsty, so. I don't know, man. Like, yeah, the dude seemed like he was rough around the edges, but. Could you say he was actually a bad person? Yes. You would think so? I just said it. <laughs> no, no. I would argue 
There was a worse person in the group that we'll get to later. Yeah. Clearly an actual bad person in the group. I agree. He did one thing. Multiple things. All right. But so we got our main characters, Buzz and Amy. They're like the power couple at the start of the movie. Han Solo and this chick. (laughs) (laughs) So she tries to talk him out of going to the amusement, to the carnival, but he fucking dick finesses her and he's like, no, 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 no. We're going to go. It's going to be fun. You're going to love it. He Donald Trump's her ass. It's going to be the biggest carnival, the best you've ever seen. And she goes for it. (laughs) And so the next scene is, I think the little brother is like watching them like when they're pulling off in the car, right? I don't know. I just feel like this dude, Buzz, was the bad guy. That's all. I don't think so, man. I think we kind of, I think he. I think he had bad guy traits, but kind of proves himself otherwise. Bad guy traits? You act like you've been knowing the guy for years. I, I just know. know in the first two minutes of the movie, and I feel like he's a dick. I hate this guy. <laughs> Look, this is what happens, man. He realized, hey, if I'm going to try to give a pussy, I need to act a little bit fucking nicer. But throughout the movie, he's still acting like a dick. Because I'll tell you why, but that was a spoiler. Was... All right, so the next scene is there. Buzz and Amy are still in the car, but now they've picked up their two friends, Liz and Richie. And also, this is another movie where I picked up the names really easily. Did you guys or did you not care to learn them? Uh, I, I didn't really care. care to learn them. Hmm. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't know any of their names. I don't know if it was just me, but this movie like took forever to like pick up. S- yeah, start fucking going. Yeah, but I think they did a lot of build up that was really well for it. Like all the weird people they run into, all the weird shit they see. Like there's shit in the background to like let you know that something weird's happening. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so they're all four of these kids are in the car, right? And they're fucking passing around a joint. It was like literally paper. They're burning <laughs> paper thin, or no, it was paper because there's nothing in it. So you don't think they were actually hidden shit? No, nah. I couldn't say. I didn't pay that much attention. It just looked like a joint. Maybe my had a. They could have rolled up fucking tobacco. But so the next scene after this is the little brother sneaking out of the house. Badass motherfucker, bro. I feel like I would have whooped this motherfucker in the kid's ass. I'm like, what the fuck are you looking on your t- sister's titties for? Just beat him. <laughs> <laughs> Just a series of ass whoopings, dog. Yeah. Why is your room so fucking weird, bro? Pop, 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 pop. But so the next scene after we see the kids sneaking out of the house, we're back in the car with the foursome. And uh, the group kind of senses that Amy isn't having the best time. Because Buzz is telling some joke about a chicken on a hot plate, I think. And he tries to, like, explain her the joke. And even her friend Liz is like, hey, you got to lighten the fuck up, man. Yeah. I don't understand that joke either. Was, I understood it. It just wasn't a good one. All right, that's probably what it was. So we're kind of switching back and forth between the car and the little brother footing it to this fucking carnival. He's going to meet his sister there, apparently. I never. I don't really understand what the fuck his plan was, dude. So, because when he after he scared her, she said that she wasn't going to take him tomorrow. Yeah. So she was supposed to take him the next day. So I'm guessing he was just like, "Fuck it, I'll take myself." So was he just going to like run up on her and be like, "What now, bitch? I'm here." <laughs> yeah. Cause and he then he was going to catch her ride back with him. Yeah, because you remember when he bought the ticket, he was asking about them. Yeah, he said, oh, "Have yeah. you seen?" He was looking for him. The lady's like, the fuck I know. (laughs) But they never, like, flat out, he never says, or the movie never implies, like, what he was actually going for. He just kind of goes there, looks for, continues to look for, and that's it. Like, it never says what he was going to actually do when he saw her. No, it doesn't establish that. I wonder how how long he had to walk for that shit. It couldn't have been that far. I, I refuse to believe he walked. But then again, they drove a fucking car there. Because so. he ran into that dog in the fence. Yeah, because that's the first thing. He hears like some weird ass bird. I think it's supposed to be an owl, but it sounded like a fucking dude pretending to make owl sounds. Yeah, you heard this. You heard it like, who? Who? That's all you hear. <laughs> <laughs> Even owl sounds, dog. I got you another one doing that too. I'm going to just take all the sound bites. 
you gotta make a, I don't know, like a dubstep song. Out of it. <laughs> who, who, who? I can't even do it like you do it. But fucking, so when he hears the owl sounds, that's when a German shepherd, a big ass fucking dog, jumps on the fence right behind him, scares the fuck out of him, and then he just dips. You know, it was like when the dog jumped on the fence and it was growling, that dog's mouth was closed. No. Yeah, that dog, the, the, the growling shit is not from the dog. So you saw a fuck up in the movie? I saw a whole bunch of fuck ups. No shit. I never catch those, bro. I'm always like so like just watching like for the story that I can't pick out those type of things. Yeah. Nah, I'm trying to remember all the fuck ups. So then the next scene is the group, I guess, at the actual carnival. And there's a scene of like some dirty guy walking around eating something. I don't understand. He's like in that. a trench coat and he's like just covered in dirt. Is he eating like a donut or some shit? I don't know what the fuck it was. Probably a hot dog. Is he supposed he, to be a bum or a homeless dude or something? I thought he was covered in like used oil. Uh, dude, it looked like it was a. Uh, at first, I thought it was like blood on his face. Yeah, I, I did like, too. Oh, okay, people are already getting fucked up. And then the next scene is kind of like a montage of the kids kind of like enjoying the carnival festivities. Fucking buzz fucking hits the bell with the hammer wins a teddy bear or some shit i've never tried that before i have did you win no <laughs> <laughs> nah so after like buzz wins the prize for they're playing these carnival games and riding rides uh liz and amy decide to go to the restroom and they're kind of talking they're just talking about old dude right mm-hmm. i'm pretty mm-hmm. sure no, yeah, they're, and, no, and then uh, that's when also uh, Liz drops the bombshell. Amy is a virgin. She has the V card. You know, path undiscovered. Yeah, I forgot about that. And then in that same breath, some old lady randomly. Oh no! She, uh, when she mentions the V card, Amy throws like a paper towel mm-hmm. at Liz, and it misses, and it lands on the floor. And then some creepy ass old lady walks into the restroom. And she picks it up, and then she says, uh, "She just says God is watching, right?" You remember that, that story I told you when I went to McDonald's to get my coffee? Yeah, that bitch looked like that. That would have been scary as fuck. So you understand why I was like, just grab my shit, like, thank you, and just walked away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, nah, I don't fuck with the old lady. But no, nah, so then the old lady, she's like, God is watching. God sees everything, hears everything, and then she kind of like does this menacing walk to the restroom. And then Amy and Liz continue talking. And then again, while she's taking a shit, this lady's like, God sees everything. That's just in my head what I picture. Like, she just went to go take a deuce. A fast anyone? Mm hmm. That's the Lord shit. God's watching. <laughs> I don't see why they made her look all fucking goth if she was supposed to be, like, religious. What do you mean? Because she was dressed in all black. Yeah. She looked more like a witch, right? They're more pagan than fucking... Maybe they're like... What's that religion called where they don't like to express themselves? Like the word... Amish? Is it? No. Mormon? Is it? I don't know. No. I don't even know. (laughs) (laughs) Why do you keep shooting them down, bro? Jehovah's Witness? No, I don't don't know. Express themselves? I'm fucking done. He's talking about mimes, obviously. Ah, yeah. I just... If it was up to me, if it was me and I just saw this old lady, I'm like, this bitch is just crazy. Most, I don't, I hate people pushing that religion down people's throats like that. I hate it when they come and knock on my door asking if if I'm baptized or saved. But no, so after this scene, we had my favorite, one of my favorite parts in the whole movie. It's where the little brother, he's still walking down this fucking road to get to the carnival. Oh, yeah. And uh, some guy pulls up in his truck. And he's like, uh, hey, little buddy, you need a ride? Uh, and the kid like looks like he's pondering it, right? Yeah. He's kind of looking around. And for a second, I'm like, oh, this is about to be some like kidnapping. Racer. I didn't think it was going to be pedo but that was in the back of my mind. But P-O-E? I was like, oh, he's going to scare the fuck out of him while he's driving. Uh, I, I, that was the first thing that went through my head. Like yeah, he was gonna just, He's a pedophile. He's to try to kidnap this kid. Right. But I was like, okay, he's going to get the kid in the car and he's going to just try to, like, scare him, you know, driving or some shit. I didn't at all expect that when the kid turns his head, the dude pulls a fucking shoddy, right? Yeah. He gets a fucking shotgun and points it out the window right at the kid. 
So it went from pedophile to boys in the hood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I yelled that out when I saw that. So the kid just fucking dips and the guy just starts laughing hysterically. It was my favorite part in the movie. That shit was hella funny. Just because it was random, man. And I feel like... I felt like he, he deserved it. Yeah. He deserves way more. Yeah. He deserved to get shot. <laughs> but... I like the fact that all that's normal in 1980. If I was a kid and somebody pull up in a strap like that, I need to tell mom and dad. I need to tell somebody. I'd be all over Facebook. Hey, look out for this fucking dude did such and such, blah, blah, blah. Back in the day, bro, that's just a story that kid probably kept. After this, we go back to the carnival, and now the group's gone to a freak show. And uh, there's a word for those fucking guys. The guys who uh, have the microphones. Announcers? No. Well, <laughs> announcers, yeah, but there's a specific term, because I watched the fucking... Oh, barkers. Oh. I watched like, the interview. That's what they call them, barkers. Step right up, step right up, blah, blah, blah. Trying to sell shit. Yeah. Yeah, those are called barkers. So she sees a barker, and he's all talking about all the weird shit they got. And uh, the main chick, Amy, she's got this weird habit of any dude with a microphone, she's got to, like, stare at them as hard as she fucking can until they notice her. And then once they actually stare back, she goes, (gasps) does this, like, jump, like, surprise expression. Like, what did he think was going to happen? Like, you're standing 10 feet away from me just staring, bro. But so that happens, and then they go into this freak show. And what they see in there is a cow with the cleft lip and a two-headed cow. So it's not really a freak show. It's just deformed cows. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's just lies. I thought the first cow was normal. No. No, it was missing part of its lip. Oh. Because the cat, it's like tongue out of its mouth, and it just... Mm. Yeah, it kept licking there. Oh, I didn't notice it much. Second cow, I did. I feel like I'll still eat it. It was like tacos. Still good meat. Meat's not deformed. It might taste better. So they're about to leave the freak show. <clears throat> but then, the dude uh, with the glasses, Richie, he sees a sign that says, Feature Attraction Must See. So he calls the group back, and they go through these curtains in the freak show. And uh, how would you guys describe it? It's a fetus in a jar. Looked like an alien fetus in a jar. Yeah, it was a deform. Was it even a fetus? Because that just looked like a baby in a jar. It had the umbilical cord still. Did it? Yeah. yeah. I didn't even notice. You ever seen the elephant man? Yeah. Imagine that, but it's a baby. So, a Maybe baby with a giant it. fucking head. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Yeah, it looked like an alien baby. What else would you compare it to? Uh, like Men in Black, you know, the little fucking alien that was in the guy's chest? Oh, yeah. It looked like a giant brain on his head? Yeah. It looked like more like that thousand, is that thousand corpses? House of a thousand corpses? Yeah. You know, remember when they brought out that baby in the jar and the mom kisses it? Yeah. It's like that. That's pretty close to it. I mean, not like the actual baby, but the whole design, I guess. Because this baby had a distinctly, like, fat fucking head. I feel like it was just a gla- the jar. I mean, it looked like that. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> baby had a fat head. So the guys think that this is hilarious. The dudes are just fucking clowning on this fucking baby the whole time. And the girls think it's disturbing, obviously, so they dip out. Mm-hmm. So also when they leave this tent now, they see that this carnival has a... Strip show. Yeah. Be- before the strip show, supposedly Buzz cuts his hand, remember? Oh, oh he uh, he pretends that he puts his hand in the thing, right? Yeah. He touches the water. The baby the baby feet is water shit. And he's like, ah, oh, the fucking thing bit me. And he tries to show Richie. He's like, man, look, look what it did. And then he rubs the fucking fetus juice all over this guy's face. So you understand why I feel like he's a dick. <laughs> a bad guy. Look, man, I think that's a decent joke. Rubbing. I would have been pissed too. Yeah, we'd fight definitely, but 
We ha ha it later. <laughs> I mean, you definitely know who the alpha is in that group. Yeah. Like, he knew that guy wasn't going to do nothing. Because I think he he even said, like, I don't know. What was the guy's name? Richie? Richie was like, dude, what the fuck? It's like, what, what are you going to do about it? He did, didn't he? Mm-hmm. He was like, come on, he put his arm around him, right? And he's kind of just like, what are you going to do? <laughs> so you see a little by little, I'm covering you to think that he's an <laughs> asshole. That he's a bad guy. I don't know. Like, that's not straight um, up like, you know, Darth Vader traits yet, bro. Like, it's a little, that's an actual joke. It's not, you know, walking in on your sister ass naked with a fake knife. That's another asshole. <laughs> <laughs> like, there, there's levels to it. There's levels to it. See, in my opinion, <clears throat> the, Amy's brother... Nearly irredeemable from that. Nearly what? Nearly irredeemable. Like, there's almost nothing the kid could have done made me go, like, oh, he wasn't so bad. Nah. Nah. First off, anybody that sees their own sister, like, they're fucked in the head. But, nah. You, you guys can change my opinion. He's a dick. I'm about to change you guys real quick. <laughs> Just wait. So, after they see the strip show, like, stage... Uh, the group sees the actual fun house. And now the Barker for this one is a different guy. And like for me, like even as a kid, I just remember uh, just the way he talks. He's got a real distinct voice and it's always stuck with me. Because remember he's like, uh, I can't think of it. It's vaguely like, um, walk into the house if you would, if you dare. And, he, and then he says this phrase, he's like terrified. He was terrified. Was yeah. And I don't know, that just always stuck with me. I like how he did that. The Barker was effective. The man did his job. No, nah, but so then, once again, Amy decides she needs to fucking have a staring contest with this guy. She just fucking eye fucks the shit out of him, pretty much. And the second he acknowledges her again, the whole <gasps> loses her breath for a second. Like, ah, he stared back. And also, while he's talking, you see there's a guy in a Frankenstein mask just walking around in the background. Did the guy stand out to you at all at that point in the movie? Yeah. Yeah. Like, in what way? Was it just, like, that's an interesting fellow, or? No, the reason it picked up to me, I thought, well, a, a thousand, House of a Thousand Corpses. Remember how they, they were pushing the carts? I thought this dude was going to do the same thing, but it wasn't. That's what, uh, okay. what caught my attention. You mean how he was, like, uh, his sidekick or whatever? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, is more so the fact that he was wearing a mask and nobody else at the carnival was. Yeah, but I mean, the fact that he worked at like a haunted house attraction. Mm. <laughs> All right, you got me. <laughs> Checkmate. But instead of going to the fun house, the group decides they want to go to a magic show. Mm hmm. Motherfucker was better than Chris Angel. And it's at this point we get to the part you talked about where the little brother gets to the actual carnival. He buys this ticket and he's like, hey, have you seen a chick with big hoots and uh, a group of friends? Did you see how he paid for his ticket? No. Pulled out a sock. Full change. <laughs> I didn't pay attention to that. No. Which got to me. He's like, that was all his money. How the fuck is this motherfucker going on rides? At some carnivals, do you got to pay to go on rides? All of them. I thought you get, like, one entrance fee, and, like, that just covers everything. You got to, like, buy tickets, and those tickets get you on the ride. Mm -hmm. So after this, we go back to the group at the magic show. And uh, describe this magic show to me, fellas. It was, like, a ghetto-ass tent. Overpacked tent. And the dude would look like... He was dressed like Dracula. Badly dressed as Dracula. Like Bill and I, the science guy, and Dracula put together. Yeah. And the stage was super small. You're, oh, you never been to Carnival, right? Yeah, but like once. It, it's pretty much the same setup. I went to a magic show in a carnival. <laughs> it was you saw a magic, magic show at a carnival? Yeah, I was not. I saw Chris Angel. In real life. That motherfucker sucked in real life, too. So, don't recommend it. So, back to this fucking Dracula wannabe magician. Mm -hmm. He doesn't really... He only does the accent whenever, like, he feels the need to. He's not a very good Dracula impersonator. Nah. 
Not at all. He was more like steampunk, in my opinion, with like the spiky hair and shit. So like a punk, because that, that's like that style in the 80s, right? Yeah. Like a punk Dracula, pretty much. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. the spiky blow out hair, the shades. And uh, so he asked for a volunteer, right? And he pulls some, he pull, he acts like he's pulling a random out of the crowd. Mm-hmm. Some little white chick. And she's all like, who, me? I don't know if I could. And does the whole show. And there's a coffin on stage next to him with a window to where you can see the chick's face. Because he sticks her ass in there. Mm-hmm. And there's like a hole in the coffin where it looks like you can insert something. So at this point, the lights go down. And this uh, Dracula magician, he tells a story pretty much. Uh, he tells Dracula's story. Yeah. And that's kind of like build up to what he calls his trick, the Impaler. From Vlad the Impaler, whom Dracula was supposedly based off of. And he has a stake, right? Mm-hmm. Does he use a hammer? Or what is he? Yeah, he used, he used a hammer to put in that weird hole thing. Yeah, because he just puts the stake in that hole right over the chick's heart, supposedly, hammers it in, and as soon as he does it, blood shoots out of the bitch's mouth. Mm-hmm. Did the moment get you guys? Or did you know it was bullshit from the get-go? Nah, I knew it was bullshit, but there's, there's just something you probably never noticed. As soon as they got her out, no blood. I think that's part of the magic trick. Huh? Yeah, me too. No, that bitch split out blood in her mouth. Yeah, and like, the next scene, there was nothing, a clean face. She yeah. has a whole other outfit on. Yeah, but you're looking at the face the whole entire time. That's why if she could she... put an outfit on, she could wipe her face off really quick. She had like a rag in her hand anyways. She like it was like a red cloth. I think that's like, supposed to be part of the trick, is like the whole outfit and the blood is all gone. Yeah. Nah. Look, if you go back to it, you gotta be like, oh, that's a movie mistake. Nah. Well, no, I mean, because we all saw her spitting blood all over her face and chest. And we all saw her not have it afterwards. <laughs> I feel like it's a movie mistake. <laughs> you I dissected this scene three times, all right? <laughs> the mistakes were made. So the chick gets staked in the heart, spits blood out. Everybody's shocked. The guy plays it up, too. He's like, oh, my God. Well, this isn't supposed to happen. The way, the way he does is like monotone. I was like, oh, my God. Somebody get help. <laughs> oh no and then in the same breath he pulls the door open right or does he spin it I don't know I can't fucking remember he does some shit but he opens the coffin the mistake that you guys don't <laughs> <laughs> nah he opens the door <laughs> he opens the coffin and the chick walks out and she's wearing like some type of showgirl outfit <laughs> with no trace of blood on her whatsoever because of the magic trick I just don't understand how is that's the magic. Her face is exposed the whole entire time. But the same way we don't see her changing clothes, I, I'm assuming we don't see her wipe the blood off either. Mm-hmm. Right, but... Hence magic. Let's just go to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I just told you guys, you could have seen her, her neck down. It was completely covered. Yeah, exactly. But not her face. Yeah, that's why it's part of the magic trick. What? <laughs> you understand it, right, Chris? Yes, sir. That's all that wrong. (laughs) (laughs) So after the scene with the uh, magic show, the group decides to go visit a fortune teller. But before that, they uh, they're seen smoking a joint behind a tent. And the reason that scene's important is because they go in to see this fortune teller high as fuck. And uh, Amy's the one who gets her fortune read. And when she goes up to the fortune teller, the fortune teller has like a foreign accent, right? Yeah, a horrible fucking accent was pretty bad yeah and before the group gets there we see the fortune teller fucking juicing up she's got like a flask right she's sipping on something does anybody remember the bitch's name madam zena Mazuna? no i didn't catch nobody's names right zena something like that well i'll just call her the fortune teller so amy sits in the chair right across from the fortune teller and her friends are in the background in a couch and they're just giggling at anything this bitch says no, the whole entire time in the carnival, they're smoking. So that's why they're giggling their asses off. I feel like they're rude as fuck to the fortune teller. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, completely over the line rude. Yeah. Which, hence, they're dicks. 
That's all of them, though. Yeah, that's the whole group. Yeah, but that's just another one to add on to, Buzz. <laughs> but to be fair, I mean, the fortune teller was, like, just kind of making really broad-ass fucking guesses. Yeah, but they weren't letting her finish anything. That's true. And so there's one part where she says she sees a break in her fate line on her hand, right? Because at first she's like, ooh, you're going to live a long life. But then she's like, oh, wait, there's a break in your fate line. You're going to meet a tall, dark stranger that will come into her life. And I think we're supposed to think that's uh, old dude Buzz, right? Or that's who she probably thinks. I, I didn't catch yeah. that at all what about the fate line. Yeah, that's what they tell her right before, you know, that. Because the group keeps, like, laughing and shit. So it was finally, too focused on that blood. Just disappearing. <laughs> yeah. His eyes hurt too much from just playing the footage back, <laughs> tapes back. Okay. So after this, the group keeps, like, you know, persistently just being annoying. So finally, the uh, fortune teller breaks character. And, you know, she's like, get out, get out. And she's like, if you come back, I'm going to break every bone in your fucking body. She puts on, like, some New York accent, yeah, like right? Yeah, a Boston accent. Boston, East Coast. You know what's something weird, though? Uh huh. Well, so she flipped the fucking table. The the magic eight ball rolled to what's it's her a, face? It's a crystal ball. The magic eight ball completely <laughs> rolled back to <laughs> Do you know why they call them magic eight balls? Because there's a giant fucking eight on it. <laughs> Look, Han Solo. <laughs> it's a ball. A crystal ball. All right. Ball. So we both had one. All right. Chill. I just, I'm calling it whatever. That wasn't the point. <laughs> <laughs> They're both magic. All right. <laughs> Say so it rolled to her, Peggy, right? That's that was a, a trip. Yeah. Because and the ball rolls off right the table and then it comes back to her. So is that supposed to imply that she actually did have some type of like telekinetic, supernatural, spiritual thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which it never brings up again. Or am I mistaken? Nah, it doesn't bring up. That was weird to put in there. That's just a filler, I think. Or maybe that's supposed to show that, like, her prediction that she made actually was, like, a real thing. Like, you see the ball come back and you're like, oh, she was actually saying some shit. I feel like they need to level the building correctly. And that bitch was just rolling. <laughs> 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 The foundation was all fucked up in that tent. All right, so after this, we see uh, Amy and Buzz making out in some random-ass tent. And at the same time, the little brother finds the fun house, and he actually gets on the ride. And he gets pushed through the fun house. And we see that it's a really shitty fucking haunted house. Nah, like, it all looks like shit you would see at, like, the Spirit Halloween store. Yeah. And, and not even, like, that scary. You know what would be some scary shit? Huh. So you get on, and when you go, and you like electricity bill, gas bill, <laughs> just flashes, <laughs> mortgage. Oh, no, that was scary for me. <laughs> like, don't let this be high. Don't let this be high. And this is a crackhead. It's high. Because <laughs> <laughs> crackheads are high. <laughs> Speaking of that, so we see a lot of like homeless dudes in this movie, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was weird. Do you guys got any good, like, homeless dude stories? I do. Bring it on. So, my, uh, okay, so, my, uh, I'm excited. I, don't know, I don't know what they consider him. My sister-in-law's boyfriend, my, not my, sister-in-law's brother. What is that? Because it's not my brother-in-law. No, it's just your, your sister-in-law's sister brother. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know, I, I don't know there was another, another word for it. So, they're from an actual nice area in Missouri. Like, nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, we're in the hood. And I was like, hey, I'm going to go get another case of beer. We were having a, I think we were having a family event. I think it was a barbecue. So, my older brother's like, go get another case of beer. I was like, go with me. He's like, Drew, go with him. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, go with me. His sister's already like kind of freaking out. Like, no, I'll go. He's like, no, no let Drew go. He's he's young. He's like seventeen. He was like fifteen at the time then. And he's like, all right, man, let's go. But so we go to the liquor store, and you see these two homeless dudes. One's like talking to himself. They were addicts. The other one was overdosing. I like open the car, 
and he starts freaking out. He's like, dude, we need to call the ambulance. We need to call. I'm like, dude, no. We need to get our case of beer and leave. But it was a fucking shocker for him. And he would not shut the fuck up about it for like three fucking straight weeks about it. Bro, I can't believe what we saw back there. I was like, yeah. We can go see another one if you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's pretty much it. Nothing too fucking crazy. I feel like, as I didn't say, it was an interesting story. Mine is, uh, we went to the Taco Bell, uh, mm-hmm. like at fucking two o'clock in the morning, right? Me and my girl. And, uh, this is back in the day before the drive through. Have you been to that one a couple of times? Or do you not really go to the one on 38th and State? I don't go to the one on 38th State. Okay, well, they used to have it set up to where <clears throat> it was one of those long fucking drive throughs where you had to, like, get on a path and, like, drive around a big ass parking lot to get into it. Like, now there's just, like, an opening. You can just pull straight up to the fucking uh, machine. But before. Like I said, you're nowhere near the fucking ordering machine when you, like, go into this thing to, like, loop around to order your food. So we go, you know, we get into the loop. There's no turning back once you're into the loop. So you go all the way in, right? And when we pull up to the drive through machine at 2 o'clock in the morning, there's a dude. There's a black man with his hood on his head and with his back pushed up against the fucking menu. Just standing there, stiff as fuck. Arms at his side, like right against the menu to where you can't even see the food. And, you know, here's the order box. The dude's where you are. I'm in my car. And I pull up and I stop. And uh, all I hear out of the voice box machine, is he there? And the guy is standing, <laughs> the guy's standing in front of the menu thing and he's gone. Shaking his head. So I'm just, my window's like cracked, bro, like a fucking centimeter. I put my like lips up to the crack. Nope. <laughs> so I order the feast to end all feasts right in this <laughs> dude's fucking face. <laughs> I'm talking, I got the, the combo, I got the burritos, the extra nachos. And then after I'm done ordering, you know, she's like, all right, your total's whatever the fuck. And then he goes, like kind of like trying to get my attention, you know, putting his hand up like, you got any change to spare? And all I just said through the crack in the window, I was like, you heard what I just ordered, dog? I don't got shit left. <laughs> Kept going. Told the bitch at the window. I was like, yo, that creepy fucking dude's out there. You got to do something. That's fucking weird. That's happened twice to me up there, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite, though, dog. Just like the fucking dude standing in front of the menu, just like stiff as fuck and just shakes his head after she asks is he there. You don't be fucking weird. It's kind of weird. Mm. You look at the cameras and there's nobody there. Whoa. Whoa. So I just like cut and paste like black dudes like wherever. Naked black dudes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the story is just going to evolve that he was just ass naked. <sighs> so what would you guys have done in that situation? Kept on driving. You yeah, would just kept going? Because well, he wasn't in the middle of the... Drive. He was no, nah, he was in front of the menu, just standing in the uh, back against the menu. Nah, that's already too close to my bubble. I would have had my like gun in my lap, like yeah, because you don't know this motherfucker be like break a window, stab me, they rape my body when I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it could be the. I mean, it doesn't have to be that or, that order, but that's just I don't know. That was uncomfortable. I would have been uncomfortable. I was very uncomfortable. Especially when he's like, just not going to say I'd be like, okay, I'm done ordering. Fuck that shit. <laughs> McDonald's is right next door. See you. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the way I don't come to my zone. The second time it happened, he wasn't standing by the uh, Well, menu. that's more than once? Yeah, this, this, is, a, this, is, a completely, this is a completely different dude at like 1 o'clock in the morning. And this was at Burger King. Or some fast food spot. I eat a lot of fast food, guys. I pull up to the window, and, like, my car... The way their window is set up is, like, the corner is right where the person's standing. So, like, my car window is right here, and you can see the corner of the building right next to the person. And the exact same thing happened. She goes, is he still standing there? 
And I just turned my head a little bit, and he's standing <laughs> with his back against the wall, bro, like right where she's at, just going. What's shaking going? his head. Yeah, the homeless around, people around here, bro, are interesting. Huh. Oh, dude, and I saw a fucking one of them playing Frisbee by himself at 4 o'clock in the morning in the middle of the street. I was again at a Burger King. <laughs> 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 Waiting for my food, and I'm trapped in the line, and there's just some dude you can see in the main street, bro. Literally 2, 4 o'clock in the morning, he's just tossing a Frisbee like 20 feet in front of him, walking to go get it, picking it up. Throwing the frisbee another twenty feet, walking to go get it, like down the middle of the road. How this is a weird neighborhood, bro. How was the food? Delicious. <laughs> yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it to get stabbed too, one or twice. Josh, you have any? Um, well, I'm not a very good storyteller, but uh, one time I was working at Burger King. Um, Whoa, what are the odds? And, uh, <laughs> and I was uh, I was working overnight, and uh, this white dude comes up to the window. Uh, he was like, oh, yeah, I was trying to get your uh, attention at the speaker. But he was like, I guess it only like works for cars or whatever. <clears throat> so I was like, yeah, it does. I was like, do you want to order something? He was like, no. He's like, I'm homeless and I have insomnia. So I'm just walking around. I'm like, okay. Uh, like, what do you what do you need? He's like, oh, somebody just tried to like. He's like, I was sitting over there. He's like, and. He's like, you see this? And he had, like, blood dripping from his neck. He was like, somebody just tried to slit my throat right over there. He's like, can you call somebody? I was like, yeah, I'll call somebody. He was like, all right, can I come in? I like, no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you got to fucking wait outside. <laughs> so we called somebody, but, like, nobody ever showed up. The dude just dipped. But, mm. I don't know. He kept coming back to the window, like, punching it. So punching I, it? I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why he was punching the window. Probably because I wouldn't let him in, but... That's yeah. creepy as fuck. I thought I was going to die. You didn't even call the cops for that? Uh, we called the cops for... Because I, I thought somebody actually like tried to like slit his throat, but... Hmm. And you said they didn't even pull up? No. Nah. And it's right down the street from the police station. It's fucked up. It's that one on Roland Park. Yeah. They probably like slit his throat. No, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that time when we were working at Walmart and they found that one guy unconscious in his car? Oh, and they thought he was dead? They, we, they thought he was a dead body, bro, and we all just were, like, peeking at his fucking windows like this. Like, our faces pushed up against it. Like, this guy's so drunk. And then it turns out they thought he might have been dead. Oh, I got a story. like, And at Walmart. So, I used to work at... Uh, at a Ford dealership that was right next to a Walmart. Mm -hmm. Like, literally next door, dude. Like, I will get lunch and that's Super Walmart. And it's in Bonner. And a lot of times there's people that travel. We'll stop at that Walmart and just uh, take a nap, like 18 hours and shit. So you see cars. It's a 24-hour Walmart. So you see cars all the fucking time. And then I'm like, I pulled up one day. And I see, like, a shit ton of cops in an ambulance. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? And they were all on this one car. I'm like, that car's been there for days. This dude committed suicide in the damn car. Like, he put a knife, ripped his stomach apart, and then it was in that fucking car for, like, f three, four days. It was 100-degree weather. Whoa. So when they opened that fucking car... It was like the whole air smelled like fucking rotting fucking flesh, bro. And everybody smelled death. That's fucked Before, up. It was at least like a good day or two. And so you, it might have, it was just staying in the air, dude. <clears throat> but that's crazy, huh? What happens if you just stopped to rest and you just died? Well, in his case, he could be a suicide. But. Shit like that could happen, man. Motherfuckers don't pay attention. I wouldn't have noticed. But anyways, I got no idea where the fuck we're at. So she, she was making out with Buzz by time. And the little brother decided to ride the fucking roller coaster. Mm -hmm. So then after this, the group decides to go to the showgirl's tent. And she's wearing like a trench coat. The guy on stage, the uh, barker, right? The guy who's fucking advertising. He's basically like the guy from, you guys seen from Dust Till Dawn? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Cheech Marine's guy in that movie? 
We got black pussy. We got yellow pussy, blue pussy, pink pussy. All of it. That's more or less what the guy's doing. You know what caught my attention with that announcement? Hmm. That was his sister, he said. Which. Hell yeah. Which, like, I was like, bro, what's up with fucking sisters in this movie? Yeah, right. I think that's that stigma of, uh, like, you were supposed to assume, like, the people in, they call them carnies, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Carnies is, like, this kind of, like, subculture, right? Just hillbilly-ish white folks, the guys in the boonies, outcasts and shit. So that's, like, a uh, stereotype of those type of people, correct? Mm-hmm. So I think that's what that's supposed to be. Yeah. That doesn't make it not weird, but I mean, theory. I think out of all the chicks, the one that he was shoot, he was showing off his sister was probably the hottest one. Did you guys notice, though, that after she took the uh, coat off and she turned around, she had the flyest ass? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, she turns around to show it and it's just nothing. No, nothing. I mean, ass wasn't like a big thing in movies back then, you know? Like, it was, it was all, all about, about the titties. The titties. Yeah. I think it comes down to perful, personal preference, though, man. Like, I appreciate an ass, but I'm definitely a titties man. No, I'm an ass man. I'm an ass man. But if I could have both, I would love to have both. Yeah. So, you could be with the flat-chested chick as long as she had a big ass. Yeah, I could be with any chick. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you're saying that... I don't know. What's your preference? I did I, 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 I so I'm sc- saying I, don't sc- I, could forgive, bitches, like. I could forgive a flat ass for big titties. Oh, well, I've been a, I've been with a bitch that had nothing, no tits, no ass. She's like hitting boards. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like having sex with a mop. It was so bad, and she was bony. Like when I was hitting it from the back, that shit hurt. Like I. It felt like I was hitting straight bone. I felt like you're just pushing like a desk with your hips. <laughs> you're squirting it. You ever hit like your you ever hit your side on a corner of a desk or Yeah. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Same pain, but So the group is at this showgirls tent. They don't pay to go in and watch these bitches. They go around to the back. Because they're underage, they can't get in. Is that why? Yeah. Oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah. So they go to the back and they're smoking the joint again, right? Uh huh. And old dude Buzz has a pocket knife that he never takes out again, does he? Yeah, he takes it out. Ah, yeah, they do take it out. So he cuts a hole in the tent. And uh, everybody's fascinated by these women because they see a stage with like the group of pervious dudes these guys could find. There's a couple of bitches in the audience. There's females in the audience? Yeah. I wasn't looking at the audience, to be honest with you. Yeah, me neither. Like, I mean, I saw, like, a couple of the one or two faces they'd zoom in on, and they were all, like, stereotypical, like, balding, chubby dudes, old guys, pretty yeah. much, right? Just guys you would expect to see in this tent. I don't think I feel comfortable going in that tent. How come? How come? First off, they were way too fucking close. Like, even when I go to the strip club, I'm not that close to another dude. And I feel like they're just... The girls didn't even look that great. And they weren't fully nude, so. But you got to imagine this is 81. You don't have a phone. Yeah, there's no internet. You've seen only so many, like, women at this point. I mean, there's magazines, bro. What's a magazine, though, compared to, like, the real deal? I don't know. What's a magazine compared to video? I don't know. You're right. It's 1980. These dudes are fucking blessed to see this shit nah but yeah so you said you actually liked the way the strippers looked in the tent I did not they they weren't bad looking women but they weren't like you know what you would typically expect to uh, be shown the guy advertised the seven most beautiful women right they were definitely like run of the mill just like middle aged white chicks correct Yeah. they Um, weren't like models they were just regular women nothing wrong with them but they weren't what you would expect to see in, like, our day and age. They're not IG models. So as they're looking at this fucking tent, doesn't one of the females, she can't get a glimpse. So she's like, I'm going to look for my own hole. Walks around the tent, and I'm pretty sure she sees the guy jerking off. 
I'm pretty sure that's what he's. They don't really show it, but his like backs to the camera and he's looking in his own hole, pretty much just beating off. No, I don't think he was beating off. I think he was just doing the same thing what the other dudes was doing, trying to get a free show. No, because he tried to say uh, a man can't take a piss in public. Yeah. Or a man can't take a leak in pit in peace. He walks away with like fucking with his pants. So he tried to say he was taking a leak. (laughs) (laughs) He happened to be taking a leak while staring at a peep show. To be all fair, aren't you on your phone while taking a shit? I don't got him. I, I'm not connecting the metaphor. I'm just saying, yeah. I mean, it could be taking a pee and seeing the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that's the metaphor. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's fair. I guess it's a fair argument. Which brings up my next attention: Why Buzz is a dick? Didn't even know what was the situation, but he was just like, "What? What are you doing? What's happening? Huh?" Like, bringing this motherfucker down. But wasn't the old man trying to do that to the girl in the first place? Yep. No. So he matched his energy, I felt. Yep. So they're both dicks. That was appropriate. No, they're both dicks. You first off, get him away from your girl, bro. It wasn't his girl. Where was the other guy? They were already <clears throat> making out and shit, so... It was Buzz that came. It was a different chick. No, it was the blonde chick. Oh, it was the blonde chick? Yeah, so the Buzz stepped in. Right. But we've already established he's the no. alpha in the group. Yeah. Another word for dick. All right, so after they you know, have this interaction with this old dude, they're walking away from the stripper tent, and the fucking guy in the Frankenstein mask is also walking with him. And they're kind of joking, like, I guess somebody else was trying to watch the show. No, and I- you notice that he wasn't that big? The Frankenstein? The Frankenstein guy. Mm-hmm. No. It really wasn't, because I think Buzz was bigger than he was. Yeah. I'm at least the same height. But they weren't they weren't making fun of um they were saying, look, there's another show. They were making fun of how he was walking. Oh. Because remember he they tried to do the same movement? He kinda like wobbled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, you know why he was swabbling, right? He was hung like a horse, bro. No. <laughs> <laughs> knew that shit. knew that shit was coming so after this they're standing outside the fun house <clears throat> and I feel like this idea comes completely out of left field when that dude Richie's like you know what I've got this fucking incredible idea guys we should spend the night at the fun house I'm like no I'm okay so right after this Amy and Liz decide to call their parents to say they're staying at each other's places and in the background, you see the old woman that was kind of fucking with them in the restroom, messing with trash, I think. Yeah. And nothing really comes of that. But she's, like, clearly in the center of the shot. We're supposed to notice this bitch as they're, like, talking with their parents and stuff. I, I, I don't know what was the whole point of that. I, I know. I clearly saw her. But I right. Like, we're supposed to see that she's there. She stares at the camera and shit, but nothing really comes of it. That's the thing I think in movies that there's a rule, especially for the older ones, that there's got to be something called a harbinger. That's brought up in Cabin in the Woods. Someone who's warning you, forbearing, shouting random bullshit. They seem like a crazy person, but low key they're the only one knows that like what's happening. So in horror movies, that like particular arc character arc is called a harbinger. Someone who's bringing bad news. So also at this time we noticed that on top of the fun house. Ha- it's called the fun house. I'm just blank. On top of the fun house, there's like a fat, pale, white chick, right? Mm-hmm. Or is she Asian? No, it wasn't Asian. It just laughs, right? Yeah. yeah. Really annoying fucking laugh. So the group gets on the fucking uh, push cards to go through the fun house. And I guess at this point, the little brother's finally seen her because he's like watching from like across the uh, park, right? Because mm-hmm. he sees him get on the ride. So next we get a shot of the uh, animatronics and all the machines inside and shit. Or no, he just sees them go in, and then he sees the carts come back out empty. Mm -hmm. And the dude in the Frankenstein mask is confused as fuck. So is the brother. They kind of just chalk it up as a loss. Yeah, they're just slamming each other, right? Yeah. So the next scene is like all of the uh, uh, animatronics and the, the machines and shit, they all stopping. They're supposed, that's indicating that like the park's closing down. 
And we started to see people kind of like walking away from the tents and shit. So then some time passes and the little brother is still at the fucking park with nobody there. And uh, he walks up to the fun house and he stares at the fucking uh, fat lady on top of the fun house, the machine. And then like the, there's like a residual electricity, I guess, or something, something that makes the fucking animatronic thing like still like move just a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. And the kid like jumps at the fucking thought of it and he kind of starts backing up. And then like fucking Batman, bro, the old lady that scared (laughs) the shit out of the, uh, that was fucking with the girls, bro. Fucking like jumps up and like raises her arms and fucking scares the shit out of the kid. As a 28 year old man, dog, I'd have shit myself in that experience. That'd be terrifying. I feel like I would have punched this. I mean, that's that's my reaction just to hit something. I feel like I would have knocked this bitch out. This is cold cocked her, right? Straight Mike Tyson. I would have bit her ear off. <laughs> <laughs> So then doesn't he like run and he jumps a fence and he goes to Buzz's car and he's all checking the doors and shit. Dude, he climbed that fence pretty easy. My fat ass would have still been on that bitch for five minutes at least. I'd have gave up and just gone under. I would have just gone on the opening around. So the next scene is the the foursome inside the fun house with all the lights off and shit. And they're all making out uh, Liz and Richie fucking amy and uh buzz and amy's fucking shirts open right we get another full shot of this chick's glorious titties yeah for a version she's a slut like it's her it's the first time they go out with this dude named buzz and she's like straight giving it up to this bitch or brother just speaks to fucking buzz's fucking cock abilities it's called game man yeah i mean it's hand solo she's got a bang Han. Han. <laughs> but we, don't, note. We, don't, we don't know by hand he probably does have game also <laughs> that's right so then while these like this little open air orgy is happening they hear a loud crash and so the whole group decides they're like so everybody in this group is white right mm-hmm. so all at once when they hear this like loud crash immediately they all stand up like if some frequency has gone into the atmosphere and they're like we all have to go to this noise and it's at that point when the they're looking at their feet, the floorboards, like a light turns on. So they're like, oh, shit, there's like a room under us. And it's at this point that we see uh, it's a bedroom. And the fortune teller from earlier is with the guy in the Frankenstein mask. And we hear her say that she don't come cheap. So I think we're supposed to imply that this bitch is hooking herself out, right? And he tries to give her money a couple of times. And each time he's doing it, she's like, it's not enough. And I think finally, doesn't he bust out a $100 bill? Yeah. yeah. So I'm assuming in the 80s, that's, that's a lot more money than it is now, right? Yeah. It's probably like today's age money is probably like a. Doubled? No, 101. <laughs> 101. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't fucking tell you. Let's just say it's it's more than it's worth today. Enough where the other dude freaked out about the money. She's agreed to the fucking bread. And also, while he's getting the money, you can see like on his Frankenstein mask that fucking drool is like spilling from yeah, his fucking I lips. Yeah. Nasty, and she's still gonna do it, even with like the drool clearly like dripping down this dude's face. So the fortune teller starts to rush Frankenstein. She's like punking the shit out of this dude. I'm like, I see some porn where they're dominatrix like that, bro. Maybe he's into that. Maybe because she's all like, uh, she's like, "What are you standing there like a fucking? What did she say? Like an idiot? Yeah. She's like, lay down, take your pants off. What's wrong with you? With that thick Boston accent. Yeah. Will you be able to fuck a chick with a Boston accent? Fuck yes. Uh, I would like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Even her moan sounds like, straight from us, like, oh, I can't fucking. <laughs> like, is he was doing harder. <laughs> <laughs> is it in yet? Because I can't feel it. <laughs> and she's got like a raspy, nasty ass voice. <laughs> Why do I always got to get on top? <laughs> I can see that shit. I'm channeling the... Uh, you guys have never seen the nanny, right? From Nickelodeon? Yeah. Oh, she's fine. She's thick, too. Fran Drescher? Yeah. Mm. Anyways. So, she makes dude lay down. She makes Frankenstein lie down. And uh, she's wearing, like, a robe. So, she unveils, like, a bra and some type of lingerie, right? Yeah. And she is... 
fine. Stacked, son. Like thick. Like I, these bitch. She looked better than the fucking strippers. Mm-hmm. She was old, man, but she can get it. Like her body screamed like thirty years old. Her face probably screamed a little bit louder. <laughs> <laughs> So they're both lying down, and uh, pretty much doesn't she just like rub one out for him? Well, he he's that's what that's how it started, and he busted early because she's just trying to like start the engine a little bit, right? Yeah, but he decides like just to bust. He's, he does like the straight American Pie move. He just fucking bam. Yeah, because even she was like, "Oh, it happens to the best of us. It's fine." That's what she says. Anyways, so Frankenstein <laughs> fucking busts early. And uh, the fortune teller is like, ah, oh, like you said, it happens to everybody. It's cool. And she starts to get up and get dressed. I can understand why he'd be mad for a hundred bucks. I mean, it's his fault, but still, like a hundred bucks is a hundred bucks, lady. Yeah. Like, we're going to do something. I don't know what. I'm gonna be like, Kara, you could at least have a twenty. I need my hundred back. Maybe it was like the best hand job you ever got in your life. Like she took your soul out of your body. Do you think a female could ever give you a better hand job than you could give to yourself? No. Nope. No. Nah. Doesn't exist, right? Doesn't. So the fortune teller says it's not her fault. Oh, so Frankenstein gets up and he's all acting kind of erratic as she's grabbing her shit. So he walks to the door and he shuts it. He's like, nah, 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 bitch. You ain't going nowhere. So then he walks up to her and, you know, they're kind of like grabbing each other's arms and shit, right? And she's not really scared. At least, I mean, I'm sure she is, but she's not showing it. She's still trying to, like, punk the shit out of this dude. Like, no, you're not going to do nothing. You ain't doing shit. And so Frankenstein (laughs) tears her titties out. That's his first move. But it doesn't really show titties, right? It shows titties. I missed it. Yeah, then. I definitely saw her big ass titties. Like she like he grabs her bra and pulls down, whips, rips her fucking uh, boobs out. No, nah, you saw more cleavage, but you didn't see actual sense. I'm gonna have to review the tapes. <laughs> Send me a picture. So then after he does that, he shoves her into the breaking bo- the breaker box, and like lights and animatronics start flickering all over the place. And uh, then he starts to strangle her, puts her on the floor, chokes the bitch to death. And all in front of the group that is upstairs peeking through the floorboards. So after this, the group tries to find the exit because I'm guessing he dips out. I don't remember if we see that. Mm-hmm. D- and uh, Richie's using a lighter as a fucking light because the power is out. And this movie has like one of the most realistic depictions of what using a lighter as a light would do, which is absolutely jack shit. Yeah. Maybe in 1980, the lighters were better. Maybe. So the group wanders into the room with the dead fortune teller on accident. It happens to be next to the exit. So Buzz, like, cracks the door open. And, we, and uh, the dude, Richie, he's, like, standing by the room where the fortune teller's at. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to check real quick to make sure she's actually dead. All right, hold on, hold on. He goes into the room, comes back. I notice he touches his pocket. Fucking, did you guys catch that? Mm-hmm. No, you know what I thought? I thought he was going to go grab that titty's, that bitch's titty. Did he grab a feel of a titty? Yeah, I thought he was going to do some perverted shit. Mm. And the money that he even occurred in my head. So as soon as he, when Richie comes back, they find out that that door he was holding open has a chain lock on it. They can't get out. They're trapped, at least at this point. So the group starts wandering around the fun house, and they're making all kinds of fucking noise. Horrible ninjas. And so we're flashing back to the little gr- to the girl's little brother who sneaks back into the carnival, and uh, he tries to sneak around fucking the carnies that are working and shit. And after this part, we see the uh, the Frankenstein's come back to the room with the dead fortune teller, but this time he has you know the owner of the fun house. That's what I call them a lot, the owner. And uh, he walks in the room and uh, he can't see anything. Apparently, Frankenstein can't talk. Or he can't speak well. Because he has no idea what's going on. The uh, owner. First thing he does is goes to the breaker box. And he's like, what the fuck did you do? Then he turns around and sees the fortune teller's body. 
which is covered, so he can't see who it is yet. And uh, he's not really surprised that it happens, right? Like, before he sees who it is. No. Because he's like, oh, yep, she's for sure dead, all right. So then when he actually sees her face, though, that's when he flips out. He's like, I told you never to fuck with the family. And he's talking about the people that work at the carnival. And uh, does he, like, slap them or some shit? Not yet. He gets hit when he when he tells him uh, father. He said, like, don't you ever call me that. Yeah, because he kind of mumbles out the word father, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He kind of says it like a special ed kid, though, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. But you saw when he cocked that hand back like a pistol, just like, beat him. Mm-hmm. I would have been like, <laughs> <laughs> So the group's watching through the floorboards, and uh, doesn't the the owner ends up, so we'll just call him his dad, the father. The father kind of rationalizes, you know, the fucking fortune teller dying. He's like, you know what? We're going to dump her body, and we're going to blame it on the locals. We're just going to say that the townspeople that they happen to be in killed the woman. Mm -hmm. Problem solved. So then he happens to pull the money off of the uh, fortune teller, the $100 bill. And he kind of cracks jokes on his uh, son. He's like, you're going to pay $100 for this? Disgusting. Because I could have got you one of the girls from the tent for cheaper. For 15 mm-hmm. $15, bro. Took all three of them. I would have too. Yeah. I feel like I spend more on food. So then... Uh, he goes to put the money back in his little uh, money box. And whenever he does this, the camera goes to Richie's face. And Richie's eyes kind of get big. Like, ah, fuck. Because when the father opens the box, all the money's gone. And uh, at first, the father kind of blames the uh, Frankenstein. He's like, you misplaced it. What the fuck did you do with it? Blah, blah, blah. And so then uh, Frankenstein starts like flipping the fuck out as a... Uh, He's getting chastised by his dad. He's like breaking shit, grabbing his head, fucking headbanging pretty much, right? Mm-hmm. And then he pulls his fucking mask off. How do we just, we already talked about, no, that we described the baby fetus. So what did this guy look like to you guys? So best way to describe it. I feel like the dad, which looks like a normal old dude, fucked the bat. And had a baby. That's what it looked like to me. Like if he fucked a bat? I think that's pretty accurate. Yeah. I think it looks like one like nutsack. Like just one testicle. Like if someone like took Photoshop and enlarged a picture of like a guy's fucking ball hair. Like a ball with like the white hair. So an old man's testicle. Blew it up. Put yellow eyes. And like fucked up teeth. Nah, the thing the bad was more accurate. <laughs> nah, man, the guy looked like he had a giant testicle for a fucking head. Yeah, when that was the plot twist. I was like, oh, I thought that was just gonna be a circle of like crazy people. Yeah, so that's the twist, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. So he's a mutant. Yeah, that's the best way to describe. It. He's a fucking mutant. Hills have eye style. So after this, the uh, Richie accidentally drops his lighter through the fucking floorboards. While he's being nosy on the whole business. Dad hears it. He's like, I know you fucks are up there. Uh, the dad kind of threatens him. At first, he tries to play nice. You guys should come down, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then he's like, you're trespassing, you know? So then he tries to get him to feel guilty to come down. He's like, this dude behind me? Uh, <laughs> chill. He's cool. He's not going to hurt you. He mumbles to himself. He's like, uh, he won't. he's completely harmless. And then he like kind of mumbles. When he is it after he's been fed or some shit like that. Yeah. So after this, the two of them kind of just disappear. And now the group's wandering around the fun house again. And uh, out of nowhere, a fucking noose falls from the fucking ceiling and it just swoops fucking Richie up. Right. Mm-hmm. And did you guys catch that whenever he went up to the ceiling, the fucking money like sprinkled out under him? Yeah. The yeah. dollar bills. I love that. I, I don't understand that. Yeah, so the money fell from him as soon as he went up. I understand, but in reality, would they fully fall off? No, I think it was most. It was more supposed to be symbolism. Oh well, he fucked himself. Yeah, pretty much, he fucked himself. Unless he was getting strangled, he was trying to like hand it back. Yeah, right before he got hung, they they took props. I didn't know they were real fucking 
Yeah, that was. They took an axe and a and a, and a, and a, a big ass knife. Yeah, and they were real shit. Yeah, I was like, why the fuck would you have that in a funhouse? Yeah, and he tried to hand it the knife to Richie, and Richie was kind of being a little bitch. Yeah. I, I don't want to take this thing to defend myself and my girl. Tonight, Make no fucking sense. But yeah, so now Richie's been fucking KO'd, and now it's just uh, the three, Butch, Amy, and Liz, walking around the funhouse. Butch has the fucking axe, and Liz has the knife. And so the lights are out now, right? Because it's dark. They can't see anything. So they see that the cart is coming towards them, and there's somebody sitting in the cart. And in their head, they're like, oh, fuck, you know, it's either this dad or his, you know, mutated son. So they're kind of hiding, like, in this, like, ambush position. And as soon as the cart gets close to him, Butch has got the axe ready, cocked back, fucking. And uh, before he even does that, isn't old girl Liz screaming, kill him, swing it, take him out fucking sticks the motherfucker right in his dome and right at that moment the lights kick back on yeah and then they see he actually swung his axe into the head of richie who was probably already dead by then right mm-hmm. yeah you think like he'd be wiggling, wiggling around if he wasn't yeah so he fucking <laughs> he really got that fucking axe in the old dude's dome yeah so the cart actually keeps moving after he stuck him in the head with this axe. And now you just see this sh- camera shot of Richie, like, we're in his face with the cart going forward. And his head's kind of, like, bouncing from being on the ride with the axe in it. And behind him, Liz is chasing the fucking cart. Like, distraught, trying to save his body or some shit, I guess. Yeah. So she's alone chasing this cart. Or she's got a head start on the group. And she runs right into a fucking trap door. Falls through the trap door. Fucking lid comes up. And uh, that's when Bush and Amy get there. And they're kind of like fucking with the floor. Like, ah, fuck. How do we get her out? And I'm pretty sure it's at this moment. Isn't that when uh, the little boy. So before that, her little brother, he was like looking around the outside of the fun house. Still trying to figure out how to get in. That's why he snuck back in. Mm -hmm. And he gets the idea to look under the stage of the fucking fun house. Where there's like a curtain. And uh, when he lifts that bitch, that's when the fucking uh, the mutated guy reaches out and tries to snatch his ass, which was bullshit, because I'm pretty sure that motherfucker would have snatched him if he wanted to snatch him. Because he's got a full grip on him, but he just, like, straight up lets him go and ignores him. How does he pass out? I don't know. I don't remember. I remember that he got, got caught by the... Oh, yeah, he, uh, he fucking straight up Goldberg spears a fucking homeless dude after that. He runs into a homeless guy. The homeless guy that was eating the fucking donut knocks his knocks him on his ass. He runs and then he gets swooped up by the fucking uh I want to say it was the other fucking Barker, the guy with the freak show. Mhm. So he grabs him and the dude calms him down, puts him in his trailer, calls his parents. His parents come and pick him up. They're really calm about this. I think the mom was drunk. Yeah, she looked drunk. But the guy that had him in his trailer looked like a fucking pedo. Yeah, just yeah, like, like a pedo, bro. Fucking stroking his hair and shit. Yeah, we had a good old time. We talked it all out. Man, if I was the dad, I'm like, fuck. He probably got raped. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucked. And then, and then like that's I brought that up because the uh, wall old girl fell in the trap door. Uh, Amy's just kind of like staring out this fucking, she sees a giant fan and she can see through the outside and she sees this trailer in her parents car. So she sees her parents and you know, her little brother getting into the fucking car. She's screaming for him. They can't hear her though through this big ass fan apparently. And also at this time we see uh, old girl Liz in the basement. She's in like some sub level of this fucking fun house with a giant fan behind her. She's pretty much trapped. Mm-hmm. And so the fucking mutant comes in, creeps around the corner, real slow and hesitant, real awkward, like, like if he's even uncomfortable, right? And uh, her go-to survival tactic, hey, man, I'll fuck you. Yeah. Is, is that more or less her tactic? That's what I'm wondering. She's like, I can make you feel good. I could love you a very long time. And while she's doing this, though, low-key, she's, that's just, she's playing possum. Because she's reaching for a fucking knife behind her back. Mm -hmm. Now, am I mistaken? Or does the mutant just hug her? 
I feel like he starts to kiss her on her neck. Uh, he might have looked like he went for the hug. But. He could have been like licking her neck, but I feel like that's something they would have shown if he was doing that. Yeah. Nah, they want to try to show the back because he's about to get stabbed. Yeah. Well, she stabs him in... I swear to God, bro, in every movie when somebody gets stabbed in the back, nothing happens. You think that's real? You think you get stabbed in the back, you could possibly die or be really fucked up? Sure, you, you could. Get you, yeah, you up. could die. You're fucking. I don't know. You can still. You can still hit organs. It's a big ass muscle group too. Like. But anyways, she stabs this motherfucker right, and it does nothing to him. He immediately fucking. Uh, he jumps on top of her, and we get this kind of. This was unfortunate because it was kind of a lazy camera shot where it's like just her legs and his legs, and they're like. It looks like he's humping her, but I think they're supposed to be like, air quotes, a struggle. Yeah. And then the next scene is kind of him, like, you see him, like, looks like he's slapping her. But then when he brings his hands up real slow, they, like, make sure you see his hands in light. And they have blood on him, and he has, like, claws. So he's actually just scratching the fuck out of this bitch. And I think then after this, that's when uh, the dad actually bumps into Buzz and old girl Amy. (laughs) Doesn't he, like, because they get to the doors, but it's locked, the main entrance. And he comes around like a fence and he's got a pistol or a revolver. And they're asking him, like, you know, why are you doing this? And they're like, he's like, oh, he's not such a bad guy. And he really thinks of this dude like as a son because he's like, I'll take you fishing and shit. And he even says, he says something that's kind of weird. Like, they really want to register. Like, he says, he'll he'll take care of me in my old age or something, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He'll watch after me in my old age. You think he meant, like, legit? Or is like he gonna be like murking people for him into his old age? Nah, he's gonna take care of him. What distracts him? Doesn't one of the animatronics turn on? Like a skeleton comes out or some shit. And uh, right when the old man gets distracted, fucking Buzz tackles his ass and knocks the gun out of his hand. Right? He like shoots like twice. Like there's like a small struggle for the gun. Yeah. And the old man actually fucks him up, right? Or gets the upper hand in the in the scuffle. Nah, I feel in like he fucked him fight, up. Yeah. So the old man fucked him up. Yeah, I'm gonna fight. He must have had golden gloves. Something. But then at the end of it, of course, the old man standing directly in front of an old suit of armor with a giant fucking sword in its hand. A real fucking sword. And Buzz fucking just shoves dude, and his fucking the sword goes right through the center of this guy's stomach. That was tight. And so, what happens next, right, is uh, Buzz is like, hey, you know what? I need the dude's keys, even though he just died, you know, half a second ago in my head. Walks directly in front of, I mean, I guess this is kind of believable, right? Because you'd have to be close to him to get to his fucking keys. Yeah. I just feel like I want to stand directly. Yeah. (laughs) Off to the side, right? Yeah, especially when his pockets are on the side. Just like two-piece him a couple times to make sure he's really fucking out. Because he goes directly in front of the old man, and he's going through his pockets, and he, like, sees the old man lift his head, and they make eye contact with each other. And then he, like, starts trying to pull him into the sword. I thought he actually got him, but he didn't, right? He did a little bit. He was bleeding on his stomach. Yeah, but before he can actually fully impale him with the sword, also, fucking Buzz picks the gun up and just fucking dumps all over that motherfucker. And kills him that way. And so, like, immediately after that, they're walking away, and uh, fucking the the mutant guy, he jumps out of the fucking rafters, pretty much, doesn't he? Yeah. The what? In, uh, like, theaters and shit, they call those things up there rafters. Oh, no, I never know. I mean, they were called like that. So that's what the, uh, yeah, it's like a stage type shit. So he jumps from the fucking rafters, and, uh... He goes straight to his dad, obviously. And he turns around upset. And this entire time, Buzz has a fucking gun that works, right? No, he shoots it. And the, he, he sh- well, or is like, he pulling it and it's clicking? Yeah. Clicked a couple of times, but he got he got a shot off. Well, no, because when the initial struggle happens, fucking uh, Amy runs out of the fucking room. So all she hears is a single gunshot. Yeah. If I would have survived that... Like, we're good, bitch. Obviously, you did not have my back. Completely dropped the ball. He told her to go. Did he? But, yeah, he told he, her to go, but... Even even then, yeah, I would have not gone. 
feel I like that's, help, I that's like a jump test, this right? motherfucker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she's waiting to see, you know, who emerges from the scuffle. And fucking, it ends up being, uh, the door's open, and there's, like, this clown on, this clown animatronic thing, like, comes into the room, and it's holding Buzz's fucking body in its arms. And he's got the gunshot wound, correct? Mm Mm-hmm. Which gives a great hint that this monster knows how to use a Glock. I get. He did not have a gunshot wound. Or was not I don't know. He was bleeding, but, like, later on you see a gunshot in the monster's chest. Oh. You think the thing on his stomach was the knife wound or the sword wound? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, there was that. So how'd he die? I don't know. I thought I thought he got shot. I thought he got shot too. Because you, you can see the bullet later on on the fucking mutant. Or... Alright, so what part of the movie were we on? <clears throat> fucking, um, the doors opened up and the clown thing was carrying Buzz. Okay. And also, I gotta add, so Jesus had to step out. This is his birthday. My man's has gotta celebrate. So me and Josh are gonna go ahead and close this one out. So we just found out that Buzz, Buzz is dead. He was carried out by the clown. I keep calling them animatronics. Is that what they are? Yeah. I think that's safe to say. Yeah. Mechanisms. Costumed robots. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and, uh... So, after this, uh, fucking Amy's kind of, like, real delirious. She's, like, walking around the uh, fun house and all the lights and shit are back on. So, she keeps, like, bumping into all these different fucking variations of animatronics and scares, right? Yeah. And she ends up... So, now, after she's had gone through this, like... um hysterical moment when she's seeing like all the fucking animatronics and shit she ends up back in the room with a dead fortune teller and she uh, locks herself in and like the second she locks herself in that's when the fucking mutant guy comes and he starts breaking the door in and how does she get out of the room is it a vent yeah there's like a vent behind her that they didn't see before yeah so she climbs into a vent while the guy's breaking into the room And uh, she ends up crawling out into, like, another sub-level section of the uh, funhouse, like a basement. Yeah, where all those gears and shit are. Yeah, it's just pure, like, mechanic. All the mechanics, I'm assuming, for the animatronics upstairs. There's, like, just hooks on chains (laughs) swinging around the ceiling. Like, it looks like Hellraiser or Freddy Krueger's world. Uh, she tries to fuck with the ladder, right? And it accidentally tips over into this one thing. It's like two giant gears that are like rubbing together yeah. and randomly in the middle of the room. And as soon as the ladder touches it, the gears shatter it. So that's like foreshadowing, you know, apparently. Did you catch that when it happened? Yeah. And she's checking all the doors in the room. They're all locked. So she kind of finally like grapples with this thought like, fuck I, all i can do is sit here and wait for this guy to walk in the room and uh in my head this was very reminiscent to me of the uh the evil dead podcast we did because at the end of it you know you just get that sense like oh this is the boss fight yeah. all the doors are locked the fucking metal ass room she's in like it's all gonna go down right here that was the impression i got while i watched it yeah me too so she ends up, uh, he doesn't come through where she's watching, doesn't he? Where does he hop out of? Like another fucking door pops open? Yeah, I didn't catch where he came from. Like, the- I know, like, he comes down like a ladder, in it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, the whole time she kept watching where she came from. Like, I kept thinking, like, he's going to come from, like, one of the other five doors that you've seen. Right. You know? And so he sneaks behind her, and she has a uh, metal pipe, right? It's like a crowbar. A crowbar. And she's kind of like stealing on his ass. And at one point he just snatches it from her, right? Yeah. And uh, then he cocks his hand back to hit her. And apparently this dude has the shittiest luck with fucking breaker boxes. Because he cocks his hand back and he hits the fucking breaker box. And it electrocutes him, correct? Yeah. And he's in fact so electrocuted... 
that somehow he allows himself to get caught on one of the hooks that's like going around the ceiling. And now he's unconscious on one of these hooks. And our main character, Amy, is in the direct path of these hooks, right? And she literally stands there as this dude is fucking inching closer and closer to her until literally, like, their fucking bellies are touching pretty much, right? Yeah. Like, she's that close to this dude as he's unconscious going by. Like, I get you want to tell maybe if he's dead or not, but no. No. I wouldn't even check. Like, we could just go in good faith. Like, the man's dead. Because he literally... I got this confused earlier with where I said... uh, His dad was on the sword, and he slowly lifts his head up. This was actually what I meant for this part. Like, the mutant's, like, in this bitch's face, and he raises his fucking head to her, and she's still, like, standing there staring at him while he's on the hook, right? Yeah, she's making some dumbass noise. And uh, so then he uh, grabs her ass, right? Or he's trying to grab her? Because he's going towards the, uh, the gears that are grinding. Yeah, like grabs her arm. He grabs her arm. And he ends up getting caught in the fucking uh, gears. And we kind of watch him, like, he gets caught right in the middle. So his whole, like, midsection is, like, just getting crushed by these gears, and he's stuck. And he's kind of, like, flipping out, you know, shaking his arms, grabbing his head. And while this is happening, there's, like, bursts of electricity all around him. Looks like parts of the ceiling are falling in and shit. And it's really low-key kind of anticlimactic. <clears throat> because we never definitively see him die. Like, the camera just goes to Amy's face reacting to this sight of this guy doing this, right? Yeah. And then the next shot is her just walking out of the fun house. She turns around. She looks at the fat lady, and it just starts laughing. And she looks disturbed at this sight. She turns around. And then she just pretty much walks her way out of the fucking uh, carnival. Workers are all there. The homeless dude's still there. The creepy old lady's still there. Did you see how she got out? Looked like there was a hole in the wall and a cart was coming through. Uh, I didn't even pay attention to that. Yeah, unless I'm like seeing shit. I'm pretty sure there was a hole in the wall. That like she put there? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it might have happened whenever, uh, like, all the surges of electricity were happening when he got caught in the gears. It's true. But it's not for sure. Yeah. So, and also when she's walking away, she's walking past a lot of people. And not one person decides to go, like, oh, there's a chick that looks upset and covered in blood. (laughs) No shoes on. They just ignore the shit out of her. And that's how the movie ends. So... Did you fuck with the movie in general? No, I didn't really like it. I, uh... I like the newer style, like horror movies and shit, where it's, like, a little faster to the action. Mm-hmm. I feel like, in some ways, they uh, they took too long. Like, in some ways, it was good, because you get to see, like, how the characters are before everything, like, kicks off, but at the same time, I was bored through majority of the movie. I think, uh... Older movies, in general, right? Like, pre-90s. They have a really hard time actually scaring you. Yeah. Specifically the 80s. Because, like, can you think of any 80s movies that really... Well, I mean, I guess you don't really know a whole bunch of them all. I mean, didn't, like, Friday the 13th and Halloween come out in the 80s? Late 70s, early 80s, yes. Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare those, on Elm Street. Those ones did get me. Nightmare on Elm Street. I think it was more of the thought of, like, what if, though. Ah, uh, yeah, that, like, concept's fucked up. Yeah. But no, like, I mean, in the 80s, it was more about, like, practical effects and blood and guts and shit. All this stuff they could do. And, like, they weren't really trying to scare you. They were trying to gross you out or make you go, like, wow, look at that. So, like, I kind of want to do a little bit of everything, which is why I'm hesitant to, like, do psychological movies with you guys. Because, like, how you just how you guys just described, like, we talked about a lot of the build-up. That's what, like, some of those movies are going to be, is literally us just talking about build-up and build-up and build-up. And then at the very end, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I want to do everything. So, I mean, at some point, you know, it's going to be like that. And I think I'll give you guys heads up for that going forward. Like, oh, this is just, you know... 
slasher movie. Or this is going to be a psychological movie. But this one, man, I don't know. I, like I said, I don't know if I just have a soft spot for it, but I liked it. Like, I was entertained throughout it. Like, you know, between the weird-ass characters they bump into, the old lady, the guy with the shotgun in his truck, the uh, the different barkers, fucking fortune teller lady. And then when they do actually get to the kills, man, at least that one in particular, you're right. Like, I guess, no, there's two of them. The one with uh, Richie, and then the way the uh, father dies is pretty savage. Yeah. I thought it was pretty savage how um, when uh, Buzz died, instead of like him like carrying him out or just coming out like alive, they put his body on on the on fucking top of clown. It. Yeah, that was pretty tight. I liked that. The imagery was cool in that. I think uh, I didn't like the fucking design of the uh, guy. Nah. Of the mutant. I mean, was it shocking? Yeah. I don't even think it was the design. I think it was the movement of the actor that portrayed the guy. Like, I didn't like his whole, like, sporadic fucking... Like, I don't even know what to call it. Like, if he, was he supposed to be, like, in pain? Is that why he's grabbing his head all the time? Maybe, like, angry. He doesn't know how to, like, deal with that shit. You ever seen uh, Mystery Men? Mystery Men. With uh, Ben Stiller. Oh, dude, I've I've been wanting to see that movie for years. I haven't been able to... Bro, the fucking song for it alone. Yeah. Because one of them has the ball, right? Yeah, the chick has the bowling ball with the skull in it. Yeah. But no, Ben Stiller character in that movie is uh, Rage Phoenix. And his whole power is that he just gets hella pissed off, but he really doesn't do anything. Temperatures rising. <laughs> <laughs> That's more or less what I like. it seems like. It's just a dude throwing a temper tantrum. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what it looked like, you know? And he wasn't a very big, intimidating figure. He just has a giant head. However, um, uh, so when when the dad was talking to him after he killed the the lady, right? Mm -hmm. Do you hear him talk about his mom? He's like, your mom, uh, talking about her as if she had passed away, right? And then uh, he also said, and then your your dear brother down there. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's for, that was uh, his... his his brother's on display. Yeah. I thought that was like interesting. Kind of like made me feel like okay, like it's it is actually his dad. We're never going to know what his mom looks like, but we see like kind of why the dad is like tied to the circus, you know. Mhm. Yeah. So, whenever you saw the baby fetus with a deformed head, that wasn't a clue for you like, oh, that's going to come into play later. Yeah. A little bit. Like, I, I thought like, that okay, was actually there's... slick. Yeah. I was like, all right, there's going to be, like, something that's, like, fucked up besides these cows. Like, this movie did cool foreshadowing, man. Like, the fucking uh, Frankenstein shit at the very beginning when the girl still at the house. The poster with the Polaroid. Yeah. The parents watching the movie. The uh, fortune teller reading her palm. Like, those are all really slick things that you probably wouldn't catch until after the fact on a second viewing or some shit. Yeah. Like, you know, there's good aspects to it. But like I said, I think the big, big one for me is I didn't like the main dude. Or the uh, main villain. Yeah, I didn't really either. Like, even just, like, to me, it's like even making him a different color could have, like, helped a little bit. I don't know. The, like, fucking albino white just, like... The conceptual design. Yeah. That and uh, the scream. Yeah. And the fact that his like face never moved. All you could see was his fucking tongue moving. You just saw his mouth move, right? Yeah. I think they could have been cool. I just didn't care for the design. Like I said, I think pretty much it's just, for me, the kills were enjoyable. The story, the story is nothing really special. The kills were good, except for uh, Liz. Yeah, that was yeah. lazy. Yeah. What do you think about the uh, the main character, Amy? Kind of weak, man. She didn't I really didn't... have a personality, right? No, no personality. I didn't see her evolve in the movie. Which, I mean, she just wasn't interesting. She wasn't all that interesting of a character. No. Fucking. 
I don't know. I think out of everybody, the person that had like the most growth and it wasn't even that much was a uh, buzz dude. He went from being like a prick in the beginning of the movie to the person that was like holding the group together, like trying to keep everybody alive, but failing. I would argue that it's actually the little brother. Oh, that goes, has the most growth. Because he goes from, you know, like the annoying little brother to like the fucking mute kid that's probably never going to speak again by the end of the movie. Yeah, that's true. I wasn't thinking about him. Mm. Buzz, man. I don't know. Like, I just never got the impression that he was necessarily a bad dude. Might have had some asshole traits, but. Yeah. He never did anything like unforgivable. I think my favorite line in the movie was uh, when he said, let's all stay together. We are stronger that way. Best line in the movie. Never hear that in scary movies. Mm-hmm. And then they all die anyways. <laughs> While <laughs> they're together. picked off. Yeah, Rambo style. Bro, I loved the scene with uh, fucking Liz chasing Richie's body. When, like, the camera's in front of, the, like, the uh, cart as it's, like, coming towards us. And we just see her in the background, like, chasing it. Oh, yeah. That shit was hella tight. But, so... Hmm. I guess we can go ahead and start doing ratings. What do you give it? Four, uh, one to six. So, before this, like, just seeing it... um, uh, it would have been a one, but like after discussing it and like, I don't know, just like for the kill scenes alone, uh, I think like three for the kills. Um, I like how they like showed, I don't know, it was just like certain shit that they did. Mm-hmm. Uh, the money falling down, right? And then um, Buzz coming out being held by the thing. As if it was like a... So the movie had redeeming qualities, in your opinion. Yeah. Yeah, but that's about it. The ending was kind of... Like you said, it was... Anticlimactic. Yeah. We didn't get like a whole big blood fest that we should have gotten. Yeah. There's no like actual like struggle. I think I'm rocking with you, man. I think I'm going three. Three because mostly I think I'm indifferent to it. Like, uh, I don't hate it, don't love it, probably won't watch it again, but there was things that, you know, I could find in it that I did like. Yeah, like I said, I think the biggest, like, it's hard to, like, because there's so much stuff that I like in it, but the stuff that I don't like in it's just so fucking big. Like, you can't, like, it's the collector that I keep coming back to. You can't have a weak main character and a weak villain. That's I, the whole fucking movie, bro. I love The Collector, man. Like, damn. Right. I was actually going to uh, watch The Collection just just to fucking watch it, dude. Do it, man. You can watch it. Just fucking have you watch it again before we do it. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of want to, like, wait before. Like, if I'm even in that one, right? So, like... <laughs> Like not saying that. Like, That'd be some I like fuck shit, to, bro. You know? Like, oh yeah, I just went ahead and did it without you. Fuck yeah, that. I would understand your podcast, but like, if I'm even in it, like, I would rather it be like my, like, like fresh, fresh yeah, my fresh like thoughts on it, rather than like me seeing it and then me watching it again. Oh, so <clears throat> last time I was on a podcast with you uh-huh. was with Francisco, and you asked us this question, right? Yeah. So if you were to, what was it? Uh, if you had a chance before you died if you could put something up your ass what would it be right yeah i went with money i stick by that stand by that you know whoever finds it, it's their treasure but um i got another one for you uh-huh and i like wanted to like come up with a question some something like that but uh if you had to <laughs> if you had to to uh i don't know if it would be called drink but uh if you had to like drink a liquid through your ass what would it be like if you if you had the choice between any beverage what would it be first off i think the word you're looking for is ingest sure (laughs) (laughs) any drink 
You know what I think I would do is I would do that thing where uh, they take a Diet Coke two liter <laughs> and they put like the fucking uh, Mentos in it. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that shit. You just sit on that motherfucker and just clean it out. Yeah, that was my answer too. Really? Yeah. Like word for word? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, and I thought about this shit at work. I was like at work the next day, like after that podcast, and I was like, all right. I'm thinking of a question too. You know? mm. uh, mine wasn't like out of the blue like yours was, but I yeah. no, I told you how the fucking question you had for me. It wasn't <laughs> yeah. off the cuff. <laughs> Some dudes like asking these like old man joke riddles, and in my head, I'm like, okay, now what can I ask him? <laughs> What's the riddle I could come up with? Oh shit! My other answer to yours, though, uh, I think I told Francisco, is um. I'd put a note, put a note up there, just like Saul. Like you want to play a game, <laughs> or like put a, <laughs> fucking record myself on a tape. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this poor old so what, school fucking tape yeah, out, bro. So what you have before you is <laughs> holy shit. Tell me the coroner's office wouldn't be fucking tripping. <laughs> <laughs> bro, you'd end up in SVU. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh shit! Obviously, this man was molested. <laughs> yeah. But now, nah, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. But uh, thank you for everybody that's listening. Check out the uh, Facebook page, uh, Instagram. Episodes are up on Spotify, YouTube, Apple, Google Podcast. Also, I don't know if I already said on YouTube, but I'll repeat it again. YouTube. Uh, thank you for listening. This is the Death Taco Podcast. <laughs>